Three times the Lakers and Celtics have gone to a dramatic seventh game. In 1962 and 66, Bill Russell kept lighting Red Arback's cigar. And in 69, the Celtics and Don Nelson kept getting the bounces. And tonight, a new set of heroes waits in the wings. This spectacular series has been an emotional roller coaster. There has been drama, flair, sadness, hustle, exhaustion, aggression, retaliation, and raw anger. For Casey Jones Celtics, they are pointing for a 15th championship banner. For Pat Riley, a title would be the Lakers' third in this decade. So welcome to Boston, a city in waiting, as the Lakers and Celtics come to the Garden to decide the NBA World Championship. The great Bill Russell, who never lost one, said at best of seventh games when he wrote, you're about to run your guts out in five or six miles of short, frantic sprints. The president has expressed interest in the outcome. While you're waiting there, shivering in your own sweat, you can literally feel the energy about to be released by the fans in the stands. Perfectly respectable people are getting ready to yell and scream, behaving as they never would any place else. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. Russ also used to joke that if you could bottle all the emotion that is released in a basketball game, you'd have enough hatred to start a war and enough joy to prevent one. And here tonight in the ancient Boston Garden, we'll run the entire gamut of emotions. And when we're finally finished, the survivor will receive this trophy, the Larry O'Brien Trophy, for being the NBA World Champion this year. Here in the garden, of course, you know the story. There is no air conditioning. It rose to 97 degrees on a Friday night. Tonight, it is just shy of 90 degrees, but it is not nearly as oppressive or stifling. They have found some extra fans, and that has helped the circulation tremendously. Still, heat fatigue will be a factor in this game. And for more on the matchup, let's go down now to Dick Stockton. Thank you very much, Brent. It is not as hot or humid as it was last Friday, and the Lakers feel that they were not prepared for that game. They have indeed come prepared for this game. This is a seventh game. There are only three players on both teams who have taken part in a deciding game in a World Championship Series. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Mitch Kupchak of the Lakers and Dennis Johnson of the Celtics, and they did it with different teams. One man who was a part of a lot of seventh games and was also played a major role in 10 World Championships as a player and coach is my partner, Tom Heinsohn. What does a seventh game mean? Well, Dick, the seventh game, when that locker room door closes, you can cut the tension with a knife. And the biggest challenge for a coach is to loosen up the troops. I can remember in the Milwaukee series back in 74, loosening up my players by telling the worst jokes I could possibly find. So I think the coach that came up with the best joke right is going to win this thing. Other than that and the strategy before the game and how you handle the players, how do you size up this game, Tom? I think the team that gets off to the quickest start makes their most positive statement early will win. It is especially important for L.A. to make their statement quickly because they got to try and take this crowd out of it. The heat factor should be a little less than it was in the prior game here. I think that the Lakers perhaps are better prepared to handle it. All right, Tom, and now the injury report, which is important here. Bob McAdoo is in uniform. He has a strained Achilles tendon, but he is not expected to play. Magic Johnson's been bothered by tendonitis in the knee. On the Celtic side, Scott Wedman has a fractured fibula in the right leg. He is also not expected to play, and ML Carr is going to be wearing goggles. He was hit with beer thrown by a fan in Los Angeles after the game. ML Carr said, I need the goggles, my eye bothers me, and the coach says, I will be playing. There's another story about another man, and right now for that, let's go back up to Brent. Brent? Well, Dick Kareem Abdul-Jabbar appears to be in perfect condition tonight, and that could be tremendous news for the Boston Celtics. Every time we get word that he is suffering from a migraine, it's the Celtics who have wound up with a headache. We're about ready for game seven of this world championship. The NBA on CBS. Tonight's championship game is sponsored by 
light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Ford on your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? We're back at Boston Garden, and right now for the starting lineups of both teams, let's go to public address announcer Andy Chick. First, for the visiting the Los Angeles Lakers, at guard, number 21, Michael Cooper. At the other guard, number 32, Irvin Magic Johnson. Center, number 33, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. At forward, number 31, Kurt Rambis. And at the other forward, number 42, James Worthy. The coach of the Lakers, Pat Riley. They say there's nothing louder than a packed house at Boston Garden for a big game. And the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers, who have met seven times for NBA World Championship, and the Celtics have won all seven. First one was when the Lakers were in Minneapolis, the last six when they were the Los Angeles Lakers. Pat Riley, who has been to the championship series three straight years, and the official, Darrell Garrison and Earl Strom, will work the game. And Jake O'Donnell will be the alternate. And keep in mind, at last Friday night, in the humidity of Boston Garden, they needed to go to the alternate official. The Boston Celtics have never lost the seventh game for a title, and the Los Angeles Lakers have never won. And with that backdrop, and the duels between Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, and of course, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, we get set. The championship is at stake. Darrell Garrison tosses it up. Boston ball. And the Celtics will take over possession. The Celtics want to try and make sure that Larry Bird has the ball in his hands. He was upset. Casey Jones was upset that he didn't have the ball in his hands enough in the latter stages of game number six as the Lakers won to send it to the seventh game. Henderson looking inside. Dennis Johnson finds Bird. Robert Paris gets the offensive rebound, and they're going to have a jump ball. So the Lakers effectively tie up the Celtics' seven-foot center. Well, right away, they went to Larry Bird. Casey Jones spent the last day and a half talking about it to his players. Harris will jump against Magic Johnson. And Magic didn't even jump for it. Dennis Johnson in the backcourt. He has really emerged in the last three games in the championship series. Guarded by James Worthy. Bird, smothered, goes up anyway. Well, you said it, no question that Larry Bird, the man the Celtics will live or die with tonight. Magic Johnson short with the jumper. And here's Dennis Johnson on the break. And here's Kareem at the other end. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with an incredible play. He was tangled up, but managed to get the ball up and in. Has a chance to quiet the crowd and a three-point play. The Lakers want to push the ball up as fast as they possibly can. Here's Kareem. What a move he puts on Henderson to slide by. A little trip there. Still enough balance to put it in. What a play. Gerald Henderson with the personal foul. 
Nearly a minute gone by, opening period. The Celtics are 12 and 1 at home in these playoffs. The Lakers have won five out of nine road games. Henderson outside. They've been looking for Maxwell, and now Henderson, who likes to penetrate, goes up and draws the foul. He'll shoot two. The foul is on James Worthy, his first personal foul on the Lakers first. Well, they established Larry Bird the way they want to, and now the next guy they go to is Dennis Johnson to see if he can open up the inside game a little bit with his outside shot, but they're up tight on him. Dennis Johnson was criticized early in the series, but he has come on like he did in the early playoffs. He has had 20 or more points in the last three games. He has been hitting his outside shots and has been a terrific challenge to Magic Johnson defensively. He has done the job in that department since game four. And I think Magic is going to have a little different approach to playing Dennis Johnson. They're going to try and blow by him. Magic Johnson against Dennis. Kareem double team. They'll double team all the big guns. Harris knocks it out of bounds. L.A. ball. Obviously, as we've established, the half court game means first number 33, Kareem. He is 80% of their set offense. They go to him practically all the time, and the Celts are ready for it. Magic Johnson now has missed two shots from outside. Cedric Maxwell, the rebound for Boston. So Kareem has all three Laker points, but Magic has missed two from outside. But I don't like what the Celtics are doing right now, Dick. They're not pushing the ball fast at the Lakers. Larry Bird, fall away over Worthy. Way short. And now the Lakers coming back. Neither team has been able to run yet in the opening minute. But the Lakers have tried. Here's Kareem, sky hook. He has struggled with the sky hook throughout the series. And now the Celtics have it. Two minutes gone by in the first period. Bird. Kareem gets the rebound. He has been the leading rebounder for the Lakers. As Michael Cooper handles it, Rambis decides not to challenge Robert Parrott. He's setting a screen for Magic Johnson. Henderson is pesky and commits the foul. Foul is on Henderson, and that's his second. The Celtics will show a packed-in defense against Jabbar early to make Cooper and Johnson shoot from the outside. That time, Henderson challenged Magic. Magic Johnson has missed two outside shots. Worthy, who has been the second man the Lakers like to go to in half-court offense after Kareem. And now they're going to call Henderson with a third foul. Gerald Henderson fouling away from the ball now with three personal fouls. And Casey Jones with 9.31 to go in the first period may have to go to his bench and will. Here comes Henderson trying to guard uh, Cooper on a cut right behind Larry Bird. He picks up his third. And ML Carr is going to make his entrance, goggles and all. First dead ball. Kareem Abdul Jabbar with the sky hook. He has all five Laker points. The Celtics lead by one. Harris. Rambis clears. Fast break. Try. It's two on one. L.A. Worthy. Cooper. And it's Michael Cooper with a two on one. They got it up in a hurry, Tony. When they get the rebound, they have the best team in the NBA to push it up against the defense. They'll beat you all the time. You got to hustle back. A.C. Jones said, quickest fast break he's ever seen. Maxwell going inside is called for the offensive foul. Cedric Maxwell on the charge. And now ML Carr has come into the ball game, replacing Gerald Henderson, who goes out with three fouls. Carr is the spiritual leader of the club. His steal in overtime sealed off game number four for the Celtics, the big win for them. Johnson out to Worthy. Rambis, no basket. And a three-second violation has been called against the Lakers. Both teams very tentative right now. Not really into their style the way they like to be, the emotion of the game. Well, that coming out quick. But they're going to the big guns. They're going to Bird and the Boston side. Kareem and Magic on the Lakers side. Dennis Johnson. Well, he's had that shot lately. Dennis Johnson has six points. He has six of Boston's eight. Kareem has five of the Lakers' seven. Michael Cooper on the miss. Harris out to Maxwell. It's a three-on-two break for Boston. His second basket. 
Four minutes gone by, first period. The Celtics lead it, 10 to seven. Michael Cooper comes back and hits from outside, and he has been a reliable outside shooter throughout the series. Now the Celtics are pushing it up. Johnson against Rambis. ML Carr. Bad pass. Picked off by Magic Johnson. Cooper, three on one Lakers. Rambis. Foul. The basket is good. And the Lakers, making the most of the fast break, have taken an 11 to 10 lead. Their second lead of the game. Here's a steal. ML sees the man attack him, puts it on the floor, sees Kareem adjust, and the next thing you know, the quick hands of the Lakers. And long pass out. Look at this three on one. You've got to get back quickly against the Lakers. You're going to pay the price. Foul is on Dennis Johnson, his first, and the 14th foul on Boston. Five, and you're in the penalty. Kurt Rambis has a three-point play. And now the Lakers lead by two. This is not a fast team that the Celtics have on the court right now, so they really have to work hard at getting back. Larry Bird with a brilliant bounce pass to Maxwell, who ties the game with 7 minutes, 18 seconds to go in the first period. And Michael Cooper and ML Carr going at it. And the foul is on Carr. ML Carr is known for his physical play. Here's ML. He's going to stay with Michael Cooper. They try and rub him off. But he's right there with them, muscling. His job is out there is to get a little physical, and the officials are calling it close. Fifteen foul on the Celtics. They're in the penalty, and Michael Cooper will shoot two. ML Carr wearing the goggles, beer in his face, and he told me before the game that he said there was something in there besides the beer that really irritated my eyes. If it were just beer, he says, I think it would have been all right. They certainly have been red for the last couple of days. That's an unfortunate thing that some fan out in L.A. did. So Cooper makes only one free throw. You see the time. Nearly seven minutes to go in the first period. Lakers lead. And now they call a foul on the Lakers away from the ball. It is only their second team foul, and it's the first foul charged to Kurt Rambis. A 20-second timeout taken by K.C. Jones. What does K.C. want to talk about right now? Well, I think he wants them to really establish their style. They've got to push it up. They're half walking it up all the time. They don't have the great foot speed in there with Henderson not being in the backcourt, so somebody else has got to advance the ball quickly for the Celtics. Tommy, you talked about the importance, particularly of the Lakers, to getting off to a good start. How would you judge this even game, so to speak, in the first five minutes? Well, they have to be very happy right now to be one up. Instead of a few few points down, the Celtics I look very, very tentative establishing what they want to do. Normally they come out running. The Lakers have run their fast break. They've cut, picked up two or three of them, easy hoops, and uh, the Celtics really are being dominated right now. Kevin McHale is on the bench, and of course he'll be coming off it before long for the Boston Celtics. He was voted the best sixth man this year, right there, but has been generally disappointing in the series so far. Bird is outside, and Michael Cooper, one of the best defensive players in the NBA, knocks the ball away. Cooper will cover Bird like a blanket, but there have been times Bird's been getting away from him. And he scored very well underneath against Cooper, made him pay the price on the boards. Robert Harris, who has the ability for a big man to hit the 12-footer, puts Boston up by one, and we have under seven minutes to play. We're in the first period. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn here at the Boston Garden. And ML Carr hustles nicely and saves it to Dennis Johnson, who's going all the way in for the basket. No. He took too many steps. No basket. And I think he was just determined to go all the way inside. They had Larry Bird wide open and didn't dish it off to him. And he should have. He goes right into the pack. You can't see Larry Bird. who's right on his right side, but he ends up traveling. And the Celtics call a timeout. They lead by one. NBA Commissioner David Stern amongst the capacity crowd tonight. As well as Larry O'Brien, the former commissioner. And the Larry O'Brien Trophy will be awarded to the winner of tonight's game as NBA champion. 14 to 13, the Celtics lead the Lakers. And the Lakers, who have been able to push the ball up effectively inbound it. Tough defense by Boston in the backcourt. A little pressure, but this is not the best press team the Celtics can throw out there. Cooper looking into Kareem. Kareem in good position. And Abdul Jabbar now with seven points in the game. He's averaging over 26 in the series, and he's the Laker high scorer. When he wants to get position, he gets it. 
Larry Bird now picked up by Magic and Cooper. They double him way outside. That was Pat Riley's plan. Car is open. Now Rambis up picks him up. Three point attempt. Misses. But the Lakers with a good half court defense as they doubled both Bird and Parrish. Here's Magic Johnson. Looking behind him to Bird. Lakers by one. Magic going inside. Feeding Rambis. Kareem controls it, but into the hands of a Selvin. Parrish to Johnson. Now Bird. Maxwell. And there's the long pass overthrown. As Magic Johnson thought he could spot Kareem down court, but even with seven foot three inches, he was a little higher than that, wasn't he? That was the high, hard one, baby. <laughs> Five and a half minutes to play in the first period. Look how tightly they guard Larry Bird. Maxwell goes in again and draws the foul. Keep in mind that Cedric Maxwell is a good pressure player. He was the most valuable player in the playoffs the last time the Celtics won an NBA title. As Jamal Wilkes makes his first entry into the ball game, he hasn't been the vintage Jamal Wilkes, but he can hurt you with good defense and outside shooting. Danny Ainge is in the game at guard for Boston. I think Casey recognizes that he'd like to have a little bit more speed in there, particularly after ML missed that outside shot. Rambis had committed the foul on Maxwell. It was Kurt's second. And only the third team foul on the Lakers. The Celtics already in the penalty. Maxwell makes the free throw. So Danny Ames replaces ML Carr. He's in the backcourt defending along with Dennis Johnson. Wilkes came in for Rambis. Bird is guarding him. Maxwell overplaying Worthy nicely. Good defense by Boston as Bird gets the rebound. He is the best rebounder for either side. Danny Ainge pulls up. Harris keeps it alive. Under five minutes to play, first period. Boston by three. Dennis Johnson. Loose ball, and Kareem has it. Watch Magic lead the break. He's got Worthy and Cooper, and Wilkes is the trailer. They go to Kareem. Inside move against Parrish. And an offensive foul against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. His first. All right. With Bird in the ball game right now, every time he puts the ball on the floor, there's going to be a double team. So it's going to cause the Celtics perhaps a little bit of difficulty. There they go. With Jamal Wilkes and Michael Cooper. Bird gets it back. Maxwell. And a jump ball. Maxwell thought he was fouled as the Celtics asserting themselves on the offensive boards. And that has been the story on many of their victories in this series. What the Celtics are trying to do now, every time Bird is doubled, when he puts it on the floor, is he'll pass it quickly and then get it back so he can drive. And that's what they did there. The jump controlled by L.A. 4-13 remaining in the first period. The Celtics lead by three. Worthy, double team, and he's pushed. And that is the fourth team foul by Boston. So the Lakers will inbounds from under their basket. The foul is on Maxwell. Two personals on Maxwell. Henderson, Gerald Henderson, the playmaker who started the game for the Celtics, has been on the bench with three personal fouls. You know, when you're playing a seventh game like this, you have a tendency to not want to make one single mistake. And that is not the way the game should be played. You've got to play it with a little bit of more abandon. They say James Worthy was in the act of shooting, but he misses his first free throws. And, of course, if you want to concentrate on not making mistakes, that's usually the time you make them. You're second-guessing, you're hesitant, you're tentative, and that leads to turnovers. Celtics with the ball in a two-point lead. Wilkes guards Bird. Uh, guards Bird pretty well. He's an underrated defensive player. He's just an all-round Outstanding player. Here's Bird trying to get away. Gets it into Parrish, who's doubled. Maxwell picks up the air ball, and he's fouled. Tom, if it weren't for Cedric Maxwell and his hustle inside, the Lakers, with their smothering defense, might have a bigger lead than they have now. Whenever it gets inside, here comes the double team. And Parrish ignores it. That's a pretty tough double. 
uh, to shoot over, but watch Maxwell. Very aggressive rebounder. Always has been, been a superman in close to the basket for several years for Boston. Byron Scott, who is the unquestionable hero of game number six for the Lakers. He lit the fire for L.A. and kept it going. Has come into the ball game. The personal was on Michael Cooper. And now the Celtics lead by four. They scored the first four points of the ball game, and they're up 20 to 16. Three and a half minutes to play, and the Lakers come right back. I'm sure Pat Riley was happy to see Jamal hit that one. Wilkes with his first points of the game. Harris short. And Byron Scott with it. Lakers looking to tie it up. Magic Johnson blows past Maxwell and goes in, but misses the layup. Magic Johnson loses the ball to Byron Scott, and it's a three-on-one break. Magic Johnson in the middle. Kareem is fouled. Jabbar will go to the line and shoot two for the chance to tie it up when we return to Boston Garden in just a moment. On a, on a CBS chalk wall, we're going to see Larry Bird right here. Going to be double teamed. And the Celtics, once he uh, dribbles over there and gets double teamed, try and shake him loose. You'll see Danny Ainge pop out right here and now draw his man and Larry Bird will take off to the basket and get the pass. That's how they're going to try and defeat the double team and make the L.A. defense rotate. Meanwhile, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, fouled by Danny Ainge, is on the line. Kevin McHale has come into the ball game for the Celtics with just under three minutes remaining. Here's McHale, who was part of the big controversial play, one of several in the series when he took down Rambis. When Rambis was going to the hoop in game number four, Quinn Buckner is coming in the backcourt for the Celtics as well. He's a backup point guard, strong defensively. So right now the Celtics will have Quinn Buckner and Danny Ainge in the backcourt. McHale, Bird, and Parrish up front. Kareem hits the free throws. He has nine points to lead every score. And we have our third tie of the ball game at 20. They'll give Buckner the outside shot. He's inconsistent with it. Kareem over to Parrish, and Parrish lost it going up. Wilkes scraps and holds on. Here come the Lakers and Magic Johnson. Throws it into the hands of Ainge. L.A. is back on defense, but Ainge is going all the way in. Good quick hands. Buckner and Ainge are the two best press men that they have, and I think Casey Jones has set him to the task. Get back there and double. Magic Johnson with a screen from Kareem. Hits outside for the first time after missing his first two. And Johnson, who's averaging over 18 in the series, has only two right now. But he contributes in so many ways. Danny Ames comes back with a long-range bomb. His second field goal. And with under two minutes to go, the Celtics quickly regain their lead. He's the emotional type, Dick. When he gets hot, you don't turn him off till halftime. Kareem. And a foul inside on Boston. Kevin McHale doesn't agree with it. It's number one. You remember that after that rough play against Kurt Rambis, he got into early foul trouble against the Lakers. In game number five, he only played 21 minutes, and that's not a lot of minutes for Kevin McHale. He normally plays much more than that without even coming close to getting a foul trouble. I think he was a marked man in that game. And you can see just by the actions of Earl Strom and Daryl Garrettson that they want to stay in charge and have been in charge so far in the seventh. Well, I'm surprised nothing has erupted with Worthy after the foul on Maxwell the other day. There is Magic Johnson on the right and Bob McAdoo on the left. He came up lame Sunday in game six. He's in uniform, questionable, but likely not to play as Abdul-Jabbar makes one out of two. Celtics by one, they have the ball. McHale. The basket is good. As Bird and 
McHale exchange high five at midcourt. Kevin McHale, when he goes up, he's impossible to block. Well, the double teams in the prior games were developing so quickly, and the players are so big, he couldn't get that fall away jumper over. But because the smaller players are in here now, he's got it by Worthy, and here's Scott, a smaller player. He can jump over the top with the fall away, and that's his shot. Kevin McHale misses his bit for a three point play. The foul was on Scott, and now the Lakers. Have five team fouls, both teams in the penalty, with 127 remaining in the first period. Cooper smothered by Quinn Buckner. They give Cooper the shot. He wanted the ball back from Byron Scott, didn't get it. Scott takes the shot and hits. He is cool and poised for a rookie as he was the first guard drafted in the last year's draft. Rookies come into uh, championship games in two ways. They either think that uh, they're too scared or they think they can do everything. Bird going in. Great body control and touch inside by Larry Bird, who has six points. And I think your comment about Byron, uh, Byron Scott is that he thinks he can do everything and has got done most things. Right? You got it. And he's hit and gone and done the job. Gets it into Kareem. Inside move by Abdul Jabbar. 12 points in the first period for Kareem Abdul Jabbar. He leads the Lakers. Cedric Maxwell has eight points to lead Boston. Celtics by one. Foul before the shot. Here's Larry Bird, puts it on the floor, and a nice pick set there by McHale to free him. He eludes Kareem, the balance of Larry Bird. You know the part that amazes me about him is his stamina. He runs, he bangs on the boards, he never quits. That's quite an accomplishment for a forward. Sweden Nader comes in to give Kareem Abdul-Jabbar a breather. Cedric Maxwell is going to come in, and Robert Parrish goes out. So the two seven-foot centers will take a rest right now. The foul was on Jamal Wilkes, and Larry Bird will go to the line to shoot two. Larry Bird was the best free throw shooter in the league this year. He challenged his own team when he called them sissies before game four, and then he took on the lead. <laughs> I, think, I think he was really trying to get his own team up, and by uh, challenging the commissioner, I think he was trying to get the refs on his side, but so was Pat Riley with all that thug stuff about the Celtics. He heard Commissioner Stern here say that someone heard David Stern say that the league wanted a seven game series and of course Larry Bird went to town with it. And like you say there's a purpose to it. Six seconds on the shot clock. A three point attempt by Michael Cooper is good from the corner. Cooper has eight points. We're tied at 30 and the Celtics may be playing for the last shot. Seven seconds to go in the period. McHale against Nader. Good move by McHale. Slapped away by Scott. One second ago, and the shot is no good. Good defense by Byron Scott. And so we have completed one period here at Boston Garden. And we are just where we are when we started. The Lakers 30 and the Celtics 30. And we'll return to the Boston Garden after this word from your local station. This is CBS. We're keeping track of the temperature here in Boston Garden, and it says 91 degrees. That's inside. Outside is pretty delightful, Tom. What about the air conditioning? Well, I'll tell you, Boston <laughs> Garden spared no expense to air condition this game for tonight. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. What really happened is the iceberg melted in the harbor. Oh, <laughs> well, I know they have more fans working. I know one thing, though. It hasn't affected the shooting of the two teams. It's been pretty good. The Lakers at 61%. Boston at 50. And keep in mind that the Lakers have outshot the Celtics in all but one game in the series. That was game five. Start of the second period. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn. The Lakers have Nader at center for Kareem and the Whippets. Cooper, Scott, Worthy, and Wilkes. And there was James Worthy with an exhibition of his quickness inside. And he is unique in that. Once she gets the ball going strong to the basket, you can't stop it. Lakers lead. Cooper is on Ainge. Jamal Wilkes is on Bird. It goes in and draws the foul. Interestingly enough, Cooper is not guarding Larry Bird right now. Jamal Wilkes is. Well, they feel that Wilkes is as good a defender against Larry Bird as Cooper. And uh, it's an easier transition for the Lakers to get up on the break that way. 
if they have Wilkes guarding Bird. There is Michael Cooper, who led the Lakers in three-point shots this year. Foul was on Jamal Wilkes' second. Larry Bird hits the first free throw. Bird, leading scorer for the Celtics, at over 28 points a game. From French Lick, Indiana. Went to Indiana State at Terre Haute. Ties the score. A minute and a half gone by, or 30 seconds, we should say, gone by in the second period. Inside to Nader. He's got that hook shot, not in position for it. And a three second violation is called against the Lakers, who are in the lane too long. Uh, he got triple teamed and he got confused didn't know what to do with the ball Nader's done a good job though for the Lakers off the bench with timely rebounding and once in a while that hook shot Ainge setting something up with Larry Bird who gets it low puts a move on Byron Scott what a move by Larry Bird working it well with Ainge outside Bird now has 12 points he is the high scorer for Boston Kareem Abdul-Jabbar who's on the bench has 12 for L.A. Wilkes. Bird the rebound. Gets the break out to Maxwell. He has Buckner with him. Win Buckner. And the Celtics lead by four. That's been the biggest lead for either team in this game. Byron Scott misses from outside, going for the three pointer. And a foul is called on the Lakers. It's on Swen Nader. I'm sure that Pat Riley didn't like that quick way outside shot by Byron Scott before any of the Laker rebounders could, could get on the scene. Magic Johnson has come back in the ball game for L.A. Isaiah Thomas, his close friend, is in the audience watching the game. Isaiah Thomas, Magic Johnson, and Mark McGuire of Dallas are very, very close childhood friends. And he was in the picture, too, Mark McGuire. Haynes from Bird. Larry Bird and Danny Ainge have combined for two baskets here. The Celtics have run off eight in a row, and Pat Riley wants a timeout. A 20-second call by Pat Riley. The Celtics are make, making the passes work inside. They're passing the ball crisply and getting off some layups. Their real playmaker is Larry Bird. And in other series, they have invited him to be double teamed because they know he can find the open man. He is perhaps the most dangerous passer for a big man that's ever played the game. He, as Hubie Brown says, picks out the most dangerous man going to the basket. So that's quite a tribute. And you just saw it in that last play. And, of course, he has been a rebounding terror. He is also the Celtics' best outside shooter. And he's become an orator, too. Yes, he has. You know, he never used to talk to the press. Been he's making a lot of statements in this series. Well, there have been a lot of statements on both sides, but uh, as we said, very few people have experienced the Laker Celtic championship that goes the limit. Two minutes gone by in the second period. Michael Cooper with Ramba setting a screen. Hits again from outside. So Cooper, who had 23 points in game number six, has hit some big perimeter shots and is doing it again tonight. Ainge. So is Ainge, who has eight points. Celtics again by six. Kareem, good position again. Doesn't go. And a foul is called, a loose ball foul. Called against the Lakers, Kurt Rambis. That'll be his third personal foul. And with 9.34 remaining in the second period, the Celtics have moved out to the six-point lead. Bird is the most dangerous passer against the double team. Here we see one player, two players, a double team, and Ainge ready to cut, and Bird already has got him spotted the pass to come. And before the rest of the defense even knows what's happening, Ainge is through it and in for two. That's why the Celtics want the ball in Larry Bird's hands. And the Lakers have made a move. Mitch Kupchak has come into the ball game. Mitch Kupchak, who has 
making a comeback from two severe knee operations, and he'll be guarding Kevin McHale, a move that Pat Riley thought about using early in the series. But the Lakers get the ball back on a turnover, and Magic Johnson gets out of the crowd. Cooper left to the key. Misses the shot, the rebound, Ainge. Here's Ainge leading the break. The Celtics pushing it up. Pulls up. Cup check clears. Quick outlet to Magic Johnson. Mitch Kupchak, who's one of three players who's played in the seventh game, has come into the ball game now on a Boston foul. That's normally the spot that Bob McAdoo comes in right around, uh, or probably even earlier than this. But with Rambis uh, picking up his third foul, in come Kupchak, and that might be a blessing in disguise for the Lakers. I've always felt that the Lakers perhaps needed some more wide bodies, and Kupchak is certainly that. Larry Bird goes out. He has scored 12 points, two rebounds, and three assists. And the three assists were something to behold. Byron Scott from the corner hits. So Quinn Buckner goes out of the ball game, was replaced by Dennis Johnson. Lakers have a bigger team in there with Kupchak and Kareem. Johnson. Ah! Harris on the follow-up. Celtics have damaged the Lakers with offensive rebounding throughout the series. One thing Pat Riley didn't want uh, Kareem to do was go for the blocks tonight. He wanted him to stay with Robert Parrish. Here's Dennis Johnson out of a pack. Maxwell, McCann. The Celtics are up by eight points. And that time, Kevin McHale simply beat the Lakers down the court, including Kupchak. When the Celtics run, they may not look graceful. They're hard runners, but they get up the court. Four minutes gone by, second period. Here's the sky hook. The famed sky hook. Jack Nicholson does not have as good a seat here in Boston as he does in L.A., Tom. That we know. He's way up there in the sky boxes, I guess, or just below the sky box. Maxwell against Magic Johnson. Moving inside. The basket is good and a foul. Somehow he always goes unnoticed, but in the big games he is very much there, and Cedric Maxwell looking for his 11th point of the ball game, has it as Byron Scott commits his second personal foul. Maxwell does a good job at drawing fouls, and he's perfect from the line so far tonight. He's got those herky-jerky moves that make you bite for his face. Now Magic Johnson hits from outside. The Lakers are accurate marksmen from outside. 7.25 to go, first half. McHale and Dennis Johnson, and traveling called against Dennis Johnson. Check may be just the guy to guard Kevin McHale. Plays him rough, plays him tough. Yeah, muscles him a little bit. It's still L.A. ball. 17 seconds remaining on the 24-second shot clock. But with Kupchuk in the lineup, they're not going to have that speed that they like uh, for that four-man attack on a fast break. Magic Johnson over Dennis. And Kevin McHale, whose best game was game number one, it hasn't been the big factor he has been throughout the year. Looks like he has come to make a statement here. He only has four points, but he's been tough off the board. Dennis Johnson over Scott. Loose ball foul against Kupchak. That was one terrific block out by, I believe, Cedric Maxwell to keep Kupchak on his back. Here's Dennis Johnson trying to make his move, draws all the Lakers. And there's Maxwell keeping Kupchak away. He draws the foul. 6.47 remaining in the second period. Well, the Boston Celtics have retired many numbers, including that number six you see in the lower right-hand corner, and that naturally belongs to Bill Russell, who was the player coach the last time these teams played for an NBA World Championship, and it was the seventh game in 1969, and the Celtics won. Bill Russell always seemed to make the right plays, but somehow in the Laker, in the Celtic tradition, they always had help. Well, what happened is Russell uh, against the uh, Warriors hit the guide wire. They used to support the basket, lost possession, giving uh, uh, Philadelphia the ball with three seconds, and he came into the huddle. They called timeout, and Russell said, 
will somebody please help me? That's the first time I ever heard Russell plead for help, and Havlicek accommodated him. That's the great Havlicek stole the ball story. That's how it happened. So that's the name of the game, and keep in mind that the Celtics, when they were trailing 2-1 to one in games, banded together, talked about what Celtic pride was all about. The Lakers have it, too, obviously. You saw the rebounding story. Celtics leading 15-9. Casey Jones, who played with Bill Russell in college at USF, won two national titles. You know, he once played Casey Jones with, with a ruptured appendix at USF. Quite a tough guy. Casey came to, to Boston along with Bill Russell. Part of the history here. Meanwhile, it's 49 to 40, the Celtics lead. 6.35 to go in the half. Kareem loses the ball to Dennis Johnson. Celtics just squeezed him. ML Carr back in the game, wearing the goggles. It's a Carr and Dennis Johnson in the backcourt. Carr goes up looking for a foul. Nothing doing. And it's going to be L.A. ball. Larry Bird is back into the ball game for the Celtics. And they're putting Bird in the backcourt to take ML Carr's place. So the Celtics will play with their biggest possible team and also the slowest. Now what about the Lakers? They still have Kupchak in there. They don't have a fast team. So it may be their slowest team against the other, the Lakers' slowest team. James Worthy also back. Nearly halfway through the second period. Kareem is fouled this time. Dennis Johnson and Robert Parrish have been all over him. And the foul is on Parrish. That is his first personal foul. And for the Celtics, it is their second team foul. The Lakers already are over the limit with six minutes to go in the period. Magic Johnson loves to have those quick forwards in there so he can throw those long court passes. With cup check in there, it's going to reduce that possibility. Cooper, Kareem. Worthy. And James Worthy was there for the follow-up. Seven-point lead for the Celtics. 5.45 to go in the first half. We were tied at the first period, Mark, 30 to 30. Alley oop, Harris, and Cooper had smelled it. Comes down with the ball. Four on three for LA. Worthy is clobbered by Bird and Dennis Johnson. Well, you can just tell that James Worthy is not getting a layup tonight if the Celtics can help it after the push he gave Maxwell in game six. Dennis Johnson, his second personal, third team foul against Boston. And Worthy threw up an air ball. Well, you've seen that before. You've seen the air ball before. I'll tell you, I think the fact that the Celtics treated him that way just has unnerved them. Six-point lead. Bird against Cooper, doubled by Magic. Dennis Johnson, doubled again. The Lakers' half-court defense has been superb. McHale is short, but Harris is there. Well, their half-court defense is superb, but they're not boxing out inside. Well, the Celtics were very patient, moved the ball several passes, and then got that offensive rebound. Kareem finding Kupchak inside, and Mitch Kupchak scores his first points of the ball game. His bullets were champions back in 1978. Harris. And Worthy. And the break. Kareem running down court. Magic Johnson going in, feeding Kupchak. Offensive foul called against Los Angeles. No, it's going the other no. way, Dick. Oh, you're right. Here's Magic. He could have been called for traveling at one instance. Here comes Kupchak. And they say that McHale got him. So that'll put him at the line. McHale, second personal foul. And here is Mitch Kupchak. It has been an agonizing rehabilitation for Kupchak, who is going for his third NBA title, but in reality has played in only one. That was in the 78 series against Seattle. But the lead cut to five. Four and a half minutes to play, first half. NBA World Championship at stake. Bird, Harris, and McHale. Good hustle, knocks it out to Dennis Johnson. 
Cooper winds up in the stands, knocking some fans down. Robert Harris misses the jumper. Here's Cooper, who comes out of the stands to feed Worthy, who's fouled. And Worthy ends up almost in the first row himself. So Cooper was knocked into the stands and came out to make a feed to Worthy. Here we go. There's a good hustle play by Michael Cooper. And you see the banging going on in this thing, but when Worthy went for the layup, there is no way that when Worthy starts flying high today, he's going to land in an easy, nice position if the Celtics can help him. They're going to bang him. And the reason why is that Worthy had pushed Cedric Maxwell in the last game. Gerald Henderson, who has three personal fouls, is back, replacing... is out of the ball game. Byron Scott's coming back in. Dennis Johnson has three fouls. So right now, the Celtics have two guards. Dennis Johnson and Gerald Henderson who are in the game with three personal fouls. We have a timeout, 4.05 remaining in the first half. The Boston Celtics with a five-point lead. It was up to nine, and the Lakers have come back. But right now, we want to remind you that's coming up at the half. Brent Musburger will be along tonight. A look at some of the most memorable Lakers-Celtics games ever. Brent's live guest will be former Celtics great John Havlicek. Pat O'Brien shows us famous moments from past seventh-game struggles between Boston and Los Angeles. And Kevin Lockery looks ahead at what to expect in the second half. All that and more coming up at the half. Dennis Johnson and Gerald Henderson, two guards with three fouls in the game. And the free throw shooting. Boston has missed just one. Cedric Maxwell is perfect seven for seven from the line. Worthy. Boston's got their speedy unit in, and so does L.A. Scott. Byron Scott. Came over from San Diego in the trade for Norm Nixon is on Henderson. Cooper is on Dennis Johnson. Worthy moves on Bird. Nine on the shot clock. Maxwell goes up. Travels. L.A. Johnson, no foul called as Maxwell hits the floor. Here's Byron Scott at the baseline over McHale. McHale, an imposing figure at 6'10", and Scott missed it. He leaps just a little higher than you think he does. But the Lakers have chipped away at the Boston lead, which was nine, now down to four. And they did it with that speed, even though Mitch Kupchak was in there. They got a lot of fast break hoops. Bird slapped away. He had the inside move. He went between the defenders, but the Lakers slapped the ball away. Six seconds remain on the 24-second clock. Cooper not giving Johnson anything. Going in against Jamal. Loose ball. Dennis Johnson looks like he's been hit and shaken up. He gets up. Dennis Johnson. Looks like the left arm he's favoring. Winding down to three minutes remaining in the first half. 51 to 47. Lakers trying to come within two. And then they got Bird guarding Jabbar. Quick passing by L.A. Good fake by Byron Scott. Three seconds on the clock. And the Lakers just wasted the time away. Here comes Boston. Maxwell. Should have been a goaltending if they don't call it. The man grabbed the rim. A man grabbed the rim. That's an automatic goaltend. James Worthy commits the foul. His second. Here comes Henderson. And Maxwell eludes him, goes up and under. Now watch Worthy grab the rim. He can't grab the rim when you're shooting in the process of shooting the ball. Each team in the penalty. And Maxwell, seven for seven from the line to shoot two. back in the ball game. Dennis Johnson will go out, and right now the Lakers are going to call a timeout. Two minutes, 45 seconds remain in the first half. This is the seventh and deciding game of the NBA World Championship between the Lakers and the Celtics. And the Celtics, who have never lost the seventh game final, lead the Lakers, who have never won a seventh game championship game. I'll tell you, when you're playing, as we're looking at... Uh, who is that now? Dion, Dion Warwick. Warwick. I couldn't see her with a Lakers shirt and right behind the bench. 
Uh, we've seen her at many a Laker game. You know, they all came east here. Jack Nicholson, Diane Warwick, they have some loyal fans, too. I don't think many of the Boston fans could have fly to fall, afford to fly out to L.A. Well, the Boston fans aren't so much the stars and the, and the, the glittering celebrities, but they're the hardcore fans who have been here for the 14 NBA championships. And they're here, and they don't seem to mind whatever the climate inside in Boston Garden. The rebounding story right now. Keep in mind that the Celtics have out-rebounded the Lakers in four out of six games, and they're doing it again right now. That is Boston's game, 21 to 11. However, it's only produced a five-point lead. That's a substantial margin to have uh, on the boards, Boston, right now, but it hasn't really given them that big a, a lead. I think that the, the Lakers are managing to run their game uh, as effectively as they had hoped without Bob McAdoo. They've been forced to play either some slower people or smaller people, so that's one of the reasons why the rebound edge has gone to Boston. They've played a lot smaller people than they would have liked. So you don't think the Lakers really miss McAdoo that much to this point? Well, I, I think they do, Dick, in, in one way, uh, but it, they've compensated for it in another way. Right? They miss the shooting, but they've adjusted with speed and some muscle. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson. Kareem with 14. Magic Johnson has scored only four points. When the Celtics made the defensive switch and moved Dennis Johnson on to Magic, and Magic scored 10 points in many people's eyes, that was the key move made by the Celtics in the series. Keep it Magic. Maxwell, I drafted him. Oh. And he had the players tell... He had me tell the other players that uh, the reason I drafted him was because he was a great offensive player. He was tired of playing defense. <laughs> Gives you a little bit of both, mostly defense now. That's his first miss. Feeding Henderson is burned off the rim. That was similar to the Danny Ainge play before. And now a violation. Double dribble against Magic Johnson. Magic was ready to pass it to the wing. Somebody had his head turned. He was just about to pick it up and let it fly. Call for double dribble. Celtics by five, and they have the ball with 2.22 remaining in the first half. Larry Bird, who has 12 points. Maxwell, he goes in and is fouled. Maxwell is fouled. Let's see, it may be Kareem. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that is his second personal foul. Both teams are in the penalty, and Kareem's parents are here. Don't forget, he went to high school at Power Memorial in Manhattan before he journeyed west to UCLA. Remember Maxwell before the uh, New York series? He had one black sneaker on at the practice and one white one. One was in mourning when Philadelphia got knocked out, and the other one for, was for himself because he had to play Bernard King. <laughs> I don't blame him. Kareem. And Magic. Magic Johnson. People used to say that Magic Johnson's weakness was outside shooting. I don't think they're saying that anymore. Say on his jump shot, now you can't slip a dollar bill under his sneaker. <laughs> Under two minutes to go in the first half. McHale feeding Maxwell, who's fouled. Kevin McHale with a pass inside to Maxwell. Well, that was a little retaliation that time by Worthy after he refused to get two layup, couldn't get two layup. Watch Worthy come in there and bang him from behind. Third foul on James Worthy. So Worthy and Rambis, the starting forwards for the Lakers, each with three fouls. And Dennis Johnson and Gerald Henderson, the starting guards for the Celtics, have three fouls. And now Mitch Kupchak will be coming back in the ball game. One of the most feared things in this ball game, as far as Pat Riley was concerned, was Rambis picking up his third foul, and now Worthy in foul trouble. And the crowd give boos him as he goes to the bench. There's Rambis. Under two minutes, 151 remaining in the first half. Five-point lead for Boston. Well, with 17 points in the ball game. Cooper. Kareem almost lost it. Oh, Kupchak. Oh. Kupchak fighting for the rebound. Oh. Here's Magic oh. off the mark. Lakers had several chances, and here's Larry Bird chucking down the court. Cooper 
Cooper is fouled by Kevin McHale, I believe, at the other end. The Lakers coming back on the break after the main basket by Boston, something they do well. McHale did made that foul deliberately. He has a great steal by Larry Bird. Off he goes. And watch the second best passer on the team, McHale, give it right back to Bird for the cramp. Up the other end, you see Maxwell, after a great play like that, you don't want him to come back with an easy one. He hammers Michael Cooper. So McHale with three fouls now. Kevin McHale with three. He has scored four points in the ball game. And Robert Parrish is going to go in for Kevin McHale. This has not been an easy series for Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale said that uh, he was playing so bad on the road he wanted to make it feel like home. He even brought his wife, and that didn't work. <laughs> Hope he didn't tell her that, that it didn't work. Here's Cooper. Michael Cooper misses the free throw, 57 to 50. These players are superstitious, aren't they? Danny A. Cooper the rebound. Chance to come with it five for the Lakers with one minute to go in the first half. I'll tell you, Boston's been playing that game, and L.A. without Bob McAdoo and some unusual people playing are hanging right in there. Mitch Kupchak with the outside shoot. Five-point lead. They were tied at 30-30 at the period. Henderson. Now Danny Ainge. Ainge fall away. Parrish is there. Puts it in. No, a foul. Parrish and Bird crashing the offensive boards, but a Laker foul inside. Will send Boston to the line. Some strong working on the boards. Larry Bird was open. Here's Ainge's shot, but because he was open, Bird was in there. Strong move by Parrish to pull it down. Cup check with the wide body trying to angle Parrish out, picks up the foul. Cup check, the personal. Parrish. Mitch Cup check. I'm He's sure. playing more with Bob McAdoo on the bench for the Lakers. Strained Achilles tendon. He was part of the championship effort two years ago for the Lakers. He's got no great feelings for the Boston Celtics, Bob McAdoo, because he, he came out of this organization as a scapegoat, and he sure would like to have been part of a winning team tonight here at Boston Garden. Well, he still might be part of a winning team. 12 on the shot clock, 58 to 52. Scott, three-point shot off the mark with seven seconds to go. Larry Bird loops it to Paris. And it is still Boston ball. But you don't want the rookie to take a shot with that much time left. So if he misses, especially from long range, it gives the Celtics a good chance to come back. When you got the guts of a burglar like Scott, you got you put him in there, you suffer with him when he takes when he takes those shots. Well, not with seven seconds to go in the period. No, you're right, but when you, you're you're bound to suffer because when he takes the shot, he thinks he's got it, he's gonna take it. Well, they didn't suffer with him in game six. No. Yeah. Tries to get it in. The buzzer sounds. No basket if it had gone. And that is the end of the first half. Maxwell with 17 leads Boston. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with 14 is the high scorer for the Lakers. It is the Celtics 58, the Lakers 52. Back with Brent Musburger at the half when we come back to Boston Garden in just a moment. The Boston Celtics have a six-point lead, 58 to 52. A lot of it has been on the free throw line, where they have seven more free throws than the Los Angeles Lakers. And in the rebounding department, the usual. Boston with a 10-rebounding edge. And yet, they are very much in this game, trailing by only six points. And Tommy Heinsohn, I think you think that the Lakers are sitting well, despite the fact they're behind. Well, one of the fears Pat Riley had was Rambus not being able to play in this game. And uh, he only played eight minutes, so with him not playing a lot of time, they're right back in this thing. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Pat Riley. The Boston Celtics have a six-point lead, 58 to 52. A lot of it has been on the free throw line, where they have seven more free throws than the Los Angeles Lakers. And in the rebounding department, the usual. Boston with a 10-rebounding edge. And yet, they are very much in this game, trailing by only six points. 
And Tommy Heinsohn, I think you think that the Lakers are sitting well despite the fact they're behind. Well, one of the fears Pat Riley had was Rambis not being able to play in this game. And uh, he only played eight minutes. So with him not playing a lot of time, they're right back in this thing. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Pat Riley come back with that strategy he used in the fourth quarter of the last game with the quick people. L.A. is explosive. They can get them back in bunches. What about the rebounding deficit? If they go with the quick people, they kind of give something up there. Well, they haven't played aggressive defense yet as well as they can. And I think Pat Riley may just try that to unleash the tempo of the game in his favor. The center matchup, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has the edge in points. The Celtics have the edge of the game. What about what Kevin Lockery talked about with Brent Magic Johnson's problem? I think Magic is having a lot of trouble trying to blow by Dennis Johnson because of that knee problem. And uh, he's not shooting that well. He's shooting tentative from the outside. But he, Pat Riley wants him to drive by DJ, and I don't think he can. All right, so it's Magic Johnson and Michael Cooper in the backcourt. Kurt Rambis with three fouls and James Worthy with three up front. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar the center. Dennis Johnson and Gerald Henderson, both with three, started guard for Boston. Bird, Maxwell, and Parrish up front. Rambis inside. Oh. Kurt Rambis, who was outplayed by Cedric Maxwell decisively in the first half. Maxwell had 17 points, and that's a high for him in this series. Well, here's what the Celtics did the last ball game. They slowed the pace up, and that kind of was a mistake. Bird inside against Cooper. Cooper had him boxed well. Loose ball. Bird. Here's Maxwell. And Rambis tears the ball away for the rebound. Magic Johnson to Cooper gets it back. Left open, and he hits. 58 to 56 now. Four in a row by the Lakers starting out here in the third period. And you're right, Tom. The Celtics content to walk it up. It looked like they got the heat treatment tonight. Henderson driving to the hoop baseline. First points of the game for Gerald Henderson. Who had 22 points on Sunday. Here's Kareem. Rarely misses a sky hook that close to the basket. 60 to 58, the Celtics in front. Dennis Johnson tries his outside shot. Paris is there. They gotta go right into something. They're very, very tentative right now, and they're taking away their own natural aggressiveness. Maxwell, and a rare outside shot for him, has 19 points. So he is having a terrific offensive game. That's a bonus for the Celtics. His strength is defense and rebounding inside. Magic Johnson. Worthy goes up. Beats Rambis. And Rambis fake and then have the shot blocked by Parrish. The fake backfired on Rambis. And Dennis Johnson is fouled at the other end. Well, the two Johnsons said, OK, I got gotcha. you. And Dennis said, it's OK. Don't worry about it. First personal foul on Magic Johnson. We have a timeout. It's 62 to 58, Boston. Here's a little sportsmanship. Magic Johnson, the no layup, but he grabs him, holds him, says, I'm sorry, and Dennis says, it's okay. And we've been hearing a lot about each other banging. Haven't had much of that. James Worthy, averaging over 22 points in the series, has seven on two for three shooting so far. And with McAdoo unable to play and the Lakers perhaps hurting off the boards, James Worthy and the Lakers need his offensive in the second half. You know, one of the things by, by that uh, no layup rule that the uh, Celtics have put in is that uh, Worthy kind of sparks this team when he gets those sky crammers. And he has not shown the emotion or given an emotional lift to this team with any of those tonight. Six-point lead for the Celtics. Then Dennis Johnson is shadowing Magic Johnson, and James Worthy is going in for the hoop. So that's the kind of James Worthy the Lakers have seen in this series. Well, he didn't have a particularly good first half in the six-ball game, and he came out and dynamited Boston. Here's Henderson going in. And the foul is against Cooper. 
Cooper knew that Henderson was free and then just tried to block him going to the hoop. There is Scott Wedman who has a hairline fracture of the fibula in the right leg. You can see the wrappings. And he has been out for the last three games. <laughs> Someday she'll say I was the, to the seventh game of the Boston LA championship with my teddy bear. But to see Michael Cooper just advance the ball, they're taking it out of the hands of Magic Johnson, let Cooper bring it up a lot more. Kareem with a jump shot. Maxwell the rebound. Parrish overplayed him well. Forced Kareem to take the jump shot from 12 feet. Here's Parrish. Short. Rambis. And in the hands of Magic Johnson. Gets it back. And Magic is fouled going to the hoop. More sportsmanship. He helps Gerald Henderson up. That's what Pat Riley wanted him to do. Blow by people, take it to the basket. They call the foul on Larry Bird. His first. One on Bird. Magic going for his tenth point of the ball game. He has it. And the Celtics, who once were ahead by nine points in the second period, have seen their lead cut to 65 to 62. Lakers had come within two a few moments ago. Henderson coming off the screen. Largely overlooked. Coming in, he's made some big plays. Steals, scoring in the last game, Gerald Henderson. Celtics by five again with 8-10 to play in the third. Here's Kareem. Three men on him. Magic couldn't get the shot off. Cooper crosses it. Kareem lays it in. Wasn't pretty, but the Lakers got two. Oh, well, he hung in there for the rebound. That's what you have to do. You can't give up. You got to stay aggressive on the board. Half-court offense for the Celtics. Henderson. Puts a fake on Magic Johnson and hits two in a row. Henderson is excellent taking that jump shot on the move. Turnaround by Worthy. James Worthy with that sensational turnaround quickness. Virtually unstoppable going to the hoop and on that play too. 7.20 remaining in the third period. Henderson going for three in a row. He's got it. He's in the groove. Jerry Henderson has got nine points here in the third period. Michael Cooper coming back in hits, and they are shooting brilliantly in this ball game. Both teams are from outside. The Celtics are up by three, with seven minutes to go in the third period. And this is just about the point where you hope that one team will crack. Bird on a pass from Henderson, blocked by Cooper, and it's LA ball. Michael Cooper came out of nowhere to make a terrific defensive play as he blocked Larry Bird inside. Kevin McHale is coming into the ball game for the Celtics. And L.A. with the ball can move to within one point. <laughs> Tell you, Tommy, Michael Cooper can even get lost and still make a play on Larry Bird. Larry Bird is open for only a, se a split second, says Casey Jones. You see Michael Cooper down there being picked off a little bit by Robert Paris, but he still gets in and blocks the shot. That's hustle. The Boston crowd on its feet. They're looking for Celtics defense. But with six minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the third period, the Lakers can come within one. Both teams shooting well, but the Lakers are in the 60s. And that's phenomenal anytime. Worthy, who's come alive a bit in this period. Fighting for the loose ball. Parrish has it. Ten rebounds for Robert Parrish. Steal by Magic Johnson. He anticipated that play by Bird. You don't see Bird throw too many away. Magic looking for Kareem. Quickly back. Wide open. Short. 
and Bird gets the rebound. So the Lakers have had two chances to come within a point. Dennis Johnson, and now Magic makes a steal. And getting the right back is Henderson. Magic again. Dennis. And a foul. It's on Lakers. But it's great hustle at both ends. And if you want to see defensive basketball in the last 30 seconds, we've had more than you can handle. And Magic really hustled back and got into the passing lane when it looked like a sure layup. Now that's what the great ones do. Make the impossible look easy. And uh, stayed right in there. But I'll tell you, neither team is given a quarter right now. They're going tooth and nail. Magic second personal foul. The team fouls. Lakers have three and the Celtics one with 557 remaining in the third. You know, you try to make the other team crack. You force the ball at them. You try to make a mistake. And both teams are really showing great willpower. Is this the kind of a game where somebody could crack by the end? Well, L.A. has got the speed to score them in clusters, and Boston is aware of it. Kareem the Worthy. James Worthy now with 13 points, six of them coming here in the third period. 73 to 70, Boston. Harris. Short. And again, the Lakers, this is the third time they've had the opportunity to come within a point. But there's no movement on the Boston offense right now. They're all standing around. Magic Johnson looking inside to Rambis. And Kurt Rambis gets free and a fine pass for Magic. And now it's a one-point ball game. So the Lakers are hanging in there, despite the fact they don't have Bob McAdoo. Well, they hung in there very well without Kurt Rambis in the first half. Kurt. How does he do it? I don't know. I mean, he waited for all of them to go up in the air and saw a little room and got the shot off. Wasn't much room at all. And he just got it off the glass at the right angle. Kareem, low. And a foul. how you see the great ones do it. Look at all that attention he gets. He pulls up so he can loft it over Kareem, and that's no easy assignment, I'll tell you, when Kareem's got that 7-3 frame in his way. Maxwell, who has 19 points to lead the Celtics, coming back in the ballgame, and Jamal Wilkes, who has scored two, but is always a threat, is in the ballgame for the Lakers. Rambis sits down for Los Angeles. Where you may see the Lakers use that quickness with that aggressive defense, the scramble defense that they used so successfully in game six. Rambis on the bench. You saw Larry Bird who went out for Maxwell. So the Lakers now with the front court of Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Wilkes, and Worthy. He missed both free throws and a chance again to bring LA to within one. So Maxwell back in the game, he has 19 points. High score, Parrish, oh! and a foul. Robert Parrish is another man who was maligned early in the series. Yeah, and I believe because uh, they didn't really call his number a lot, but when he gets the ball in that good low post position close to the basket, he's as unstoppable as Kareem. But he has trouble passing out of the double team, so Casey Jones went with other players down there. Maxwell, Bird. Foul was on Michael Cooper, his third personal foul. Lakers have 14 fouls, Celtics two. Sky hook by Kareem, the all-time leading scorer, breaking Will Chamberlain's mark, and Abdul Jabbar now with 20 points to lead L.A. 78 to 74, the Celtics lead. We're getting down to four minutes to go in the third period. Harris. Baseline, long range, but there's McHale. When he comes at you from the weak side to rebound, you better put a strong body on him. Worthy finds Magic. Dennis fouls him. Dennis Johnson with his fourth personal foul. Fouls Magic Johnson. Third team foul against Boston. But Magic will shoot. John E.J. was trying to deke a worthy into making a pass to DJ thought he could pick it up uh, to Den uh, magic he thought he could pick it off and it backfired on him. 
Magic Johnson. The migraines that have affected Kareem throughout the series. Not bothering him today. Magic Johnson. 12 points and 10 assists. Why would they be giving him a green and white pill? <laughs> He's not going to take it. Dennis Johnson comes back with a big hoop. He has six points in this period. And with three and a half minutes to go in the third, it's 82 to 76. Lakers that come within three points. Then one. Loose ball. Wilkes travels. In addition to that, he was in there for five seconds. You're only allowed three. It was a camping trip that time. It's a non-stop cheer now in Boston Garden. Dennis Johnson way off. And Magic the rebound. And the only thing that'll quiet him down will be a Lakers spurt. Dennis feels he's got the hot hand. Wilkes from Magic Johnson. Those two have worked that special communication so much in recent years. Of course, Wilkes has been weakened by the virus and has really not been vintage Jamal Wilkes in this championship. Those outside shots are what the Celtics did wrong in the game six. Should be getting it inside right now. Henderson gets his own rebound. Magic Johnson knocks it out of bounds. Two minutes and 20 seconds remain in the third period. And a timeout called by Pat Riley. The Celtics still lead. It's four. Here's Red Auerbach, who will hang up the general manager's title after this game and will be the president of the ball club. And he's responsible for all those green and white banners up there as a coach or general manager and president. 14 in all for the Boston Celtics. And Pat Riley said, we're going to come in there with all the ghosts of all those championships and see if we can win one there. Now, this is a very big story indeed because it has been the key to virtually every Celtic victory in the series. They have the offensive rebound to stop the speed of the Lakers. The Lakers have their speediest team in there right now and the best offensive team. Danny Ainge replaces Dennis Johnson for Boston. McHale. Eight points for Kevin McHale, who's averaging 14 in the series. Under two minutes to go in the third period. Magic Johnson. Cooper. Harris with another rebound. The Celtics are up by six. Their biggest lead was nine. The Lakers, with that speed in there, could try and crack it open by pushing it up quickly. That's Danny Ainge, who's in double figures. And the Celtics are opening up an eight-point lead. And in this kind of game, eight points has been a good lead. Magic is starting to walk it up and not forcing the ball up. He's not pushing it up the pace that Pat Riley would like, I think. And Kareem defense well by Robert Parrish. At position for this hook and turnaround. And now the Celtics threatening to open up a 10-point lead with nearly a minute to go in the period. Parrish again. And he's fouled. Cheers on the bench. Three fouls on Magic Johnson, and Robert Parrish will shoot two. That's a pretty big lift from uh, the bench with Larry Bird, their key player, resting comfortably, getting a good rest. And I'll tell you, this guy at the line. I have a lot of admiration. All the heat that he endured during this series, he never made comment one in rebuttal. Just kept his mouth shut. And for that matter, Dennis Johnson didn't make many either. He is not shooting well, but he is doing a fine job off the boards and defensing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Nine-point lead matches the largest lead the Celtics have enjoyed in this game. We have 50 seconds to go in the third period. Worthy is doubles. Maxwell gets a hand on it. And now the Celtics with 42 seconds to go in the period. Have given their fans 
Something really to cheer about. Kareem gets a piece of it. No basket. Paris might have been fouled inside. When Kareem Abdul-Jabbar helps out on a defense and becomes a shot blocker, that automatically turns Robert Paris loose on the boards, and he's taking advantage of it here in the second half. And ML Carr, the spiritual leader for the Boston Celtics, and a subdued Pat Riley. Ten-point lead. And the Celtics have done it with Larry Bird on the bench for quite a while. like to be at home with a 10-point lead going into the fourth quarter. This crowd will go nuts and may even carry him right into the championship. But the Lakers came back dramatically in game number six, and they're capable of coming back in this one. 89 to 78. The Celtics by 11. Biggest lead. Six on the shot clock for the Lakers. Kareem with a long sky hook. Five seconds to go, Henderson to McHale. Block, and a foul. stage and you can push it at the defense like the Celtics just did it's a very demoralizing thing that's by what is meant by cracking a team as push it at them and somebody isn't hustling back on the D and you get an easy one two seconds to go and McHale will shoot two The Celtics have scored eight in a row, and Larry Bird is smiling for the first time in this championship series. After three periods, it's Boston 91, Los Angeles 78. The Celtics are 12 minutes away from a possible title, and we'll return to the Boston Garden after this word from your local station. The Lakers had... Come within a point of Boston with five and a half minutes to play in the third period, 73 to 72. They ran off 18 to six edge and nine in a row. And now, what kind of lineup do the Lakers have? They got to strike quickly, Tom. They've got their fastest lineup that they've got on their roster. Rambus is going to play center. So I expect to see them play that scramble defense right now. Double team anything down low. Blocked. Bird shot is blocked by Magic. And Byron Scott brings it up. Scott working against Ainge. Stop and go. Rambis trying to tip it in. And there's Worthy with the follow-up. So the Lakers are going with the small team, and Kurt Rambis is the center. And this is the team that really gave him the trouble in game six. They have to do it early, right? They have to do it. The thing is to try and get it on the inside. Don't let them uh, get out there and scramble and pick off the passes. Maxwell inside, oh, defended from behind by Magic Johnson, and a foul as Rambis is fouled by Danny Ainge. And so Pat Riley trying to make the adjustment in the game has come out with this alignment and it's LA ball you know when you get more aggressive sometimes you get the breaks from the officials too Dennis Johnson in to defend against magic and he's called magic all sorts of problems worthy turnaround short here's bird Larry bird is fresh he spent a lot of time on the bench in that third period and this is the type of situation where Larry bird said I want the ball in my hands McHale. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Against Rambis. Rambis slots it away. And here's Wilkes to Rambis. Blocked out of bounds by Larry Bird. So Bird doing it defensively. Gets the hand from the crowd. 
A bird, a three on two situation, just makes the best possible defensive play you can make and almost saves it. Now the Celtics are coming in with Robert Harris replacing McHale. That's more height for Boston against a smaller team. What does it mean? But he's going to have to take the shot early. It means Rambis is going to guard him. He's going to draw a quick double team, so he's got to shoot early if he's going to get it. Scott. Ainge is guarding him. Scott facing Paris throws a bad pass low. Out of bounds. It's still L.A. ball. Lakers are fortunate there. Looked like it went right through Robert Parrish's legs. as Kareem. But Pat Riley knows that he's got to do it defensively right now. Change the rhythm of this game. Worthy. What a shot by James Worthy, who has 17 points after seven at the half. And now it's 91 to 82, a nine-point game. And the Celtics are slowing it up again. Nearly a steal by Worthy on a cross-court pass. Bird. Here's Ainge, who's open. Bird gets the rebound. Triple team. Someone's open. Ainge. Bird almost tips it in. And here's Maxwell. And a Laker foul. And if the Lakers ever wanted to get back in this game right now in a hurry, they cannot allow the Celtics to dominate the offensive class like they're doing it. Well, with this small team, uh, they're going to face that problem, but whoever's got the ball has immediately got two or three men around him. But here's Maxwell, a strong move, Rambis, the shot blocker now at center. Can't do it. Foul is on Jamal Wilkes. Each team has one team foul in this fourth period. Tom, the Lakers got hurt on the offensive boards with that small team in there as Kareem remains on the bench. Well, I think this is the best chance Pat Riley has to do it, is to put that other unit in there and press, but looks like he's going to come in. Pat Riley's seen enough of the press. The Boston Celtics have withstood that defense that did him in on, on uh, Sunday. Kareem with 20 points leads the Lakers, and he comes back in the ball game. Maxwell with 19 is the high score for Boston. So now Kareem joins Wilkes, Rambis, Johnson, Scott, goes out Maxwell with 20 they got some good press men in there magic Scott and Will and they got a shot block going Kareem 11 point lead for Boston 950 remaining in the fourth period Celtics looking for their 50th world title Lakers trying to win their night and a steal by Larry Bird Came right behind Kareem to make the steal. Maxwell going strong. Wide open, Dennis Johnson. Once again, Celtics are up by 13. Magic coming right back with two. Nobody's quitting on this one. I'm sure none of those purple jerseys have even in the back of their mind. They're a team capable of spurts. We've seen it many games in this series. Dennis Johnson, Scott picking him up in a hurry. Dennis Johnson with the outside shooting. 16 points, and Pat Riley has the problem. That was a big basket. There was four seconds left on a 24-second clock when he made it. Here's Magic again. And now the Celtics with Ainge. Danny Ainge. Kareem is fouled by Danny Ainge. That'll be the second team foul against Boston in this fourth period. And the third personal foul on Danny Ainge. Well, Danny Ainge is making the uh, Laker defense pay the price. He pushed it right at him. Unfortunately for the Celtics, he didn't make the layup. Michael Cooper replaces Jamal Wilkes. What does that substitution mean? Michael Cooper replacing Jamal Wilkes. That's good defense, even quicker defense for this press that they may hope to get in there. Kareem, double team, quick pass. And now our first illegal defense call against the Boston Celtics. Celtics caught in his own by Darrell Garrison. That's a warning. The second time is a technical foul. The more that the Lakers have to go to their half-court offense, it'll be more to the liking of the Celtics. The 
Kareem. Foul. And now a technical foul has been called because the Celtics were in the illegal defense again. Two in a row by Boston. And a technical foul will send Magic Johnson to the line. Casey Jones a little bit incredulous. But the rule is really has to do with people making drops into the paint to help out on the inside game. Let's take a look. I think it may be Larry Bird as he goes past the plateau. Much too long in there as Rambus is outside. He's in the paint, not guarding anybody. Lakers with the ball following the technical. 12-point lead for Boston. Byron Scott. And Bird got a hand on it. And here's Dennis Johnson. Three on one. And Dennis Johnson is fouled. Again, the no layup rule in effect that we heard Kevin Lockery discuss. I'm of the opinion, Dick, that what they ought to do is not make the penalty so severe that the officials won't call it. They should make it a double foul on the man that commits it and also make it a three for two shooting opportunity at the free throw line. Here's James Worthy back. Byron Scott goes out. Scott, who is the hero of the last game for the Lakers in their second half rally, has four points. And Worthy is in there. Magic Johnson, four fouls for him. Well, that scramble defense that works so effectively now, maybe in the past for the Lakers, as they're going to try and do it with offense. The Celtics have gone on the line 38 times and have made 32 free throws. 13 more tries than the Lakers. And they've outscored the Lakers 33 to 16 from the line. And it's 99 to 85. Biggest lead of the ball game for the Celtics with 750 to play. Very important that LA get a hoop right here to stem the momentum. Rambis doesn't get it, and if it was last touched by the Celtics, it was. Maxwell saves it. Dennis Johnson, three on three, and Dennis Johnson will slow it up. The Celtics have never lost the seventh game with the world championship at stake, and the Lakers have never won one under the same circumstance. Bird, track, travel, L.A. ball. And the Lakers trying to come back. They're in the championship series for the third year in a row. And Magic and Kareem performing their combination. Kareem with 22 points. They're 12 down, though, the Lakers. You know, at this stage, you got to push it up just to give the appearance that you're not tired. I don't think the humidity has been a big factor, do you? Not like it was in game five. Harris with three seconds on the shot clock. Dennis Johnson, one second. Throws up an air ball, and the 24-second clock expired because Johnson's shot did not hit anything. Take a look at Kareem slipping in, and a beautiful pass over the head of Maxwell to Kareem, and a one step up and in, and that was a much-needed basket by the Lakers. 6.45 remaining in the fourth period. It's Boston 99, Los Angeles 87. Here's our situation, 6.45 to go. The Celtics lead the Lakers 99 to 87. Big story at the free throw line where the Celtics have outscored the Lakers by 17 points. And in five minutes and 15 of this final period, Tom, with their small lineup and their scrambling defense and all of that, the Lakers have made up only one point since the start of this period. Well, the free throw uh, problem, Dick, develops because when you play smaller people, when they don't get the rebound, they start reaching and trying to slap the ball away, and you get caught for that type of thing. But the Lakers right now, that quick unit that they had hoped would create some offense by playing terrific defense didn't materialize so they're back with their other people and they're going to have to do it two by two very slowly and of course the rebound edge has been heavily in favor of the Boston Celtics Larry Bird has 16 points he has 10 rebounds Just making magic work the ball up like this is taking precious seconds off that clock. And that's Dennis Johnson's doing. 
ever since that move was made, things kind of moved the Celtics' way in this series. Lakers trying to break the sweat spell as Worthy is short. Rambis trying to get it out to Johnson. Kareem off balance with the skyhook attempt. Bird, the rebound. Well, he gets the big rebounds, Larry Bird. As a difference between a rebounder and the guy that gets the big rebounds. He has dominated in rebounding for both sides. Six seconds on the shot clock. Bird with a fake on Worthy. Crashing the board. Rambis is hit by Henderson, who commits the foul. 4 fouls on Henderson. The Celtics have to advance the ball up quickly so that when this defense comes into play, they can still have enough time to move it around and get a good shot. Looking for Kareem. Not easy. And Kareem's hook shot in the lane works. Five and a half minutes, and it's 99-89. And if the Lakers are going to make a run, it's got to be here. There's no question about that, Dick. Boston is playing it slow. Perhaps too slow. Bird. Yeah. I know that's not the style they normally play, but if they can use up precious seconds and can run the clock down and hit the shot, that's going to be their advantage as Kevin McHale comes back in the game. But that can be a mistake, Dick. You take away your own natural aggressiveness and you allow the other team to climb back into it. you got to push it at them and move the ball quickly and move yourself quickly. 20-second timeout called for by the Boston Celtics to bring up to date. The Celtics lead it 99-89. The Lakers and the Celtics in battle seven previous times for the title, and Boston has won all of them. The last time was in 1969 when Bill Russell's team beat L.A. It's been a while, but now the Celtics are winning again. There's the timeout story, and we want to remind you also that following the game, we will have interviews from both dressing rooms, plus the presentation of the Larry O'Brien Trophy to the 1984 NBA World Champion. The Lakers are not out of this yet by any stretch of the imagination. They're perfectly capable of those spurts. All they need is some good defense. You, the Celtics may be letting them off the hook by playing slow down basketball. But the very important thing for the Lakers is that they can't let the Celtics get more than one shot. Four seconds on the shot clock. Harris losing it to Cooper. So there's the turnover that Tommy's talking about. The Lakers coming right back. Magic Johnson goes in. And a foul is called. It may be against Henderson. But we'll wait. Dennis Johnson, five on him. If Henderson had been hit, it would have been five on Henderson. But Dennis Johnson has five, one more, and he's out of the ball game. After those timeouts, you've got to come out of the timeout and score. The Celtics did not do it now. The Lakers have a chance to climb back into it. But Magic Johnson misses an important free throw. They'll all be important down the line. Pat Riley knows it. Larry Bird knows it. He's on the bench now with McHale, Maxwell, and Parrish up front. One out of two. One-point game. I wonder how long Larry Bird's going to be on the bench because he is a very important player for his passing ability right now. When would you bring him back? Well, as soon as he says I can go back. Maxwell. 23 points for Maxwell. Magic Johnson put the shot up. And then Parrish got hit, and Rambis is making sure Parrish is all right. Well, you can say a lot of things around Robert Parrish, but he has been hustling on the boards the entire series. Watch it come down. He draws the purple jerseys, holds on, and takes a uh, shot in the nose for his trouble. Rambis' foul is fourth. Team fouls. The Lakers have three, and the Celtics have four, with four and a half minutes to play in the fourth period. Worthy is on Maxwell. Tough pass to Henderson. And Parrish has his shot blocked by Cooper. And now they're going to say the 24-second clock expired, so the Lakers will have a chance trailing 101-90. But they really haven't made that much headway. They were down by 13 after three periods. Cooper going for three. That'll help. 
Michael Cooper with a three-point play. That's his second of the ball game. He has 16. Larry Bird should be taking off his ice pack right now and getting in this game. They need the passing. And a timeout called by Casey Jones. The Lakers have outscored Boston 8-2, to two, and with under four minutes to go, we'll see if Larry Bird comes in. In any event, it's 101-93, and the Lakers are making maybe their last big stand right now. hand we'll see if Larry Bird comes back from Boston but on the other hand the Lakers trail by eight with under four minutes to go and you like the lineup they have out there right now they have a strong lineup for scoring a good offensive lineup they got two places to go Kareem with the sky hook and they look for him 80 percent of the time they also have James Worthy who's also pretty good down there timeout story the Lakers have in essence five more Larry Bird's coming back in the game. He has scored 16, and like you say, he's everything from the press breaker to the outside shot to the best passing forward in the game. Well, they need him right now. The Celtics have been spending too much time before getting into their movement, and they've been shooting the ball under the gun and taking poor shots as a consequence. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Bird trying to get position against Worthy and Cooper. Double team, ball knocked away. And the 24-second clock expires again. That's the third time the clock has run out on the Celtics, and that's Laker defense against Bird. Well, they're not making the, the, into it quick enough so that one or two passes will produce a good shot. Well, the Lakers' defense, it's great defense. Cooper, who hit a three-pointer before. Worthy, inside to Kareem. This is a sky hook, and that's a tough shot to miss with a chance to cut it to six. It's still eight, and the Celtics have it with 319 and running. Next foul on Boston will put him in the penalty. Not so for the Lakers. Here's Paris with a second chance, and he'll go to the line. And so once again, the rebounding edge, and a tremendous edge by Boston including the offensive boards, and that's keeping the Lakers at bay right now, Tom. Well, Kareem, as I said earlier, when he goes to block shots, that leaves Robert Parrish zeroing in on the boards for the offensive rebound, and he's been making them pay. Each team with 14 fouls. Parrish has 16 rebounds. Boston has 18 more than L.A., but a timeout is called. 309 remain in this fourth period and LA still on the hunt. Tommy, despite the Lakers' good de defense, you felt the Celtics could have passed a little crisper. If they get into it a lot quicker, you'll see Larry Bird now getting the ball, and by the time he one pass and the second pass happens, the 24 second clock is about to go off before the shot is even taken. They've got to get three or four passes against this defense. And it will work. So the, Lake, the Celtics are cooperating with the Laker defense right now. A factor could be the timeout story as we get down to the end. The Celtics have only one timeout remaining. And the Lakers have four, in essence. 3.09 to go. But the most important numbers show 101 for Boston and 93 for L.A. And right now, the Celtics are three minutes and nine seconds away from their 15th world title. Parrish missed the first free throw. The foul story, Dennis Johnson is the only player on the court or in the game with five. One out of two for Parrish. Nine-point lead. And the Lakers have to make every offensive foray count. Cooper. Kareem. And there's two of them, Abdul-Jabbar with 26. A little timeout allows him to get his breath to get his shooting touch back. And the defense for L.A. as Dennis Johnson goes in, loses his footing, and a foul called against the Lakers. That's their 15th foul, and so the Celtics will get an opportunity to go to the line. Kurt Rambis has his fifth personal foul, so Rambis and Dennis Johnson in the game have five, and both remain. Dennis Johnson shooting two. Well, Dennis has played pretty well 
ever since that third game uh, or into the fourth game when he came back I have my doubts that he'd be able to mentally get himself back into it but he certainly did two forty three remain going for his twentieth point Nine points again. 240 remain. One good stop on defense by Boston right now could get the Lakers really scrambling. Kareem, who hit the last sky hook. Double team. Here's Worthy inside. Stuffs it through. Lightning quickness. And once again, it's a seven point game. You watch the clock. We're in the fourth period of the seventh and deciding game for the NBA World Championship. 12 on the shot clock. Bird finds Maxwell, who's bumped by Magic Johnson. No basket. And it was a foul that Magic had to make. Sure was, because Maxwell was wide open, but they had the ball in the right hands. Larry Bird, he's going to find the open man. They use Parrish as a decoy, and then slip Maxwell in behind him wide open. Magic has five personal fouls. And if you want to foul anyone, you don't want to foul... Maxwell, who is 14 of 16 from the free throw line. And they're all big now. Now he's 14 for 17. And two minutes remain. Cooper, Kareem, basket good and a foul. And the Lakers come right back. 28 points for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 37-year-old veteran who has won championships in Milwaukee and two in Los Angeles. And it's far from over yet, Dick, with a minute 56. A lot of time. The Lakers are a battling team. It's a five-point game, 105-100. And keep in mind that the Celtics have only one timeout remaining. And the Lakers have four. Parrish, double. Dennis Johnson, also double. They nearly lost it. Parrish in a crowd. Short. And Cooper gets the rebound. And now the Lakers can cut it to three. With a minute and a half now remaining. Magic Johnson goes up without the ball. And here's Dennis Johnson, two on one break. And a block by Cooper. What a play by Cooper. He saved the basket. A sure basket by Boston. Worthy coming back. Hits the jumper, and it's a three-point game. 105-102. 109 remaining. 16 on the shot clock. Celtics with only one more timeout. Lakers have a luxury there. Bird. And Rambis. Now Johnson with the ball. The Lakers trying to cut it to one. And he loses it. Again to Dennis Johnson who's going in against Cooper again. And this time he's fouled. The Celtics are claiming goaltending. But Darrell Garrison says no. And Michael Cooper commits the foul. Five on Cooper. Well, they picked it off, and here comes Dennis Johnson again, the second time putting in on Michael Cooper, one heck of a defender. This time he does get him to foul, and it might have been a goaltending. They hit the net from underneath. Danny Age on the Celtic bench, but Magic Johnson lost the ball twice coming down the court. Once he was saved by Cooper, but not this time. And all those mistakes he made in game two and game four, that makes you become more cautious. I think Magic, and under these circumstances, gets more cautious. He should be playing with more abandon. Magic Johnson had problems with the clock. Bob McAdoo can only sit and cheer. Two big turnovers by the Lakers. And Dennis Johnson hits the free throw. 107 102 45 seconds to go and a timeout called by the Lakers, but they're not out of it They've got some great three-point shooters including Michael Cooper 
This is the seventh and deciding game of the NBA World Championship. The Boston Celtics lead the Los Angeles Lakers 107 to 102. The Celtics are 45 seconds away from tacking up another championship banner. The 15th. But Kareem Abdul Jabbar and his famed sky hook and his 29 points is trying to prevent PC Jones from capturing his first world championship as a head coach. What about the inbounds play? How tough is it now? It's not easy to inbound the ball. Remember ML Carr picked one off the ice that the Celtics are very good at it. Cooper looking. And Magic gets free. Five point lead for the Lakers. Cooper going for three points. Kareem gets the rebound. Goes up short. And it's in the hands of McCann. And the Boston Celtics have a five point lead. Dennis Johnson using up some time. And now a foul. No basket, a foul is called. And this place is Bedlam. Cooper tried the three. Kareem tried the baseline shot. And the Lakers came up empty. And now there are 26 seconds remaining. The Boston Celtics, who beat the Lakers in a dramatic seventh game back in 1969, trying to make it eight successes against Los Angeles Lakers and Minneapolis for that matter. You know, Casey Jones, it's the first time that a Celtic coach has been in the finals in his first season as a Celtic coach. And it'll be the first time that a first-year Celtic coach has ever won a championship. Crowd control becomes a factor right now. And beefed-up security is evident surrounding the court. That just gives uh, the Lakers a little bit more time to get things together. What can the Lakers do? 26 seconds to go. They've got to go for three points, plays, and foul. They're going for the bombs right now. They're going to have to. Timeout. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, when they met for the NCAA championship several years ago, it was Magic Johnson's Michigan State team that prevailed. And Larry Bird is close to gaining revenge in that personal battle with Magic Johnson. Bird has 18 points. 11 rebounds. Magic Johnson has 16 points. As a man I truly respect, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, in victory or defeat, he is a true gentleman, and he's never been anything but a terrific credit to hard playing basketball. Celebration has begun in Boston. Celtics lead by seven. Boy, does it hurt when you know it's not going to be your ring. Dennis Johnson's been there before with Seattle. But the Lakers, who hope that even year would be a charm. They won the championship in 1980 over Philadelphia. And again in 82, I'd hope that 1984 would follow suit. Well, it's still 26 seconds left. It's a seven-point game. And two quick outside shots could put them right back in it. A steal and two big outside shots. So Boston all will not be celebrating too much right now. Wait till the end of the game. Well, that's good advice, but I th think they've already started. 26 seconds to go. 109 to 102. And somebody once said it's never over until it's over. Uh, having real difficulty, Dick, just getting the crowd off to play the remainder of this 26 seconds. Casey Jones is asking everybody to get back. The photographers are all around. And now the Celtic players are urging the fans to stay off. There's nothing that can tarnish, to an extent, a victory moment more than for the game not to be completed. Well, 
They're going to have to complete it. There's 26 seconds. That's plenty enough time for the Lakers to do something. I wish these people would get back so that the game could continue. Now there's rosin on the floor. They're going to have to take time cleaning that up. Fans, why don't you let the players play when they come out? They're going to try and get it started now. Magic Johnson will inbound. ML Carr in the ball game to defend. Here's Byron Scott going to Kareem, knocked out of bounds, and it's still Los Angeles ball. Three pointer. No good. Seven point lead, Boston ball. And a foul. Casey Jones is smiling. He knows he's got it. And Tommy, that 15th World Championship for the Boston Celtics ironically comes one year after their most embarrassing moment in Celtic playoff history when they were swept four straight by the Milwaukee Bucks. Well, Casey brought a new relaxed atmosphere to this ball club. They loved him when he was an assistant coach, and they proved it here tonight. And the Lakers, well, they made it here for the third straight season. They're a powerhouse. They're a team with stars, a team with talent. They have won their championships in recent years. They've got a 37-year-old center. Other than that, they've got some great young talent and people like Magic Johnson and James Worthy. Worthy, Cooper, even this kid Byron Scott's going to make his presence felt next season more and more. That's still very much in it. You know, you go seven games, that's one of the classics. Final second. Cooper goes to three. It's over. Celtics are the NBA world champions in a grueling seven game series with the Los Angeles Lakers the Celtics with the best record in the league beat the team with the second best record in the league the final score Boston 111 and Los Angeles 102 15 world titles another banner will be hung from the rafters at Boston Garden the presentation of the O'Brien Trophy to the new world champions. Pat O'Brien will try to get a word from the Lakers. We'll be back with Brent Musburger and the gang with post-game ceremonies in just a moment. Hang high. Another banner from the Boston Garden. The Celtics have done it. It is number 15 for this proud franchise. And with me now is the commissioner of the NBA, David Stern, and of course the retiring general manager, Red Arback, and the man, Casey Jones, who did a brilliant coaching job in this series. Commissioner? What a spectacular finale to a record-breaking season, Red. It's my pleasure to present the Larry O'Brien Trophy to the NBA world champion, 1984 Boston Celtics. Congratulations to Red Auerbach, number 15. What a way to go. Congratulations to KC Jones, who did a great job all year. And congratulations to Alan Cohn, Don Gaston, and told the Dupree for their ownership. <laughs> Fred, how do you feel? How, how does number 15 make you feel? It feels great. Whatever happened to the Los Angeles dynasty? You guys were talking about a dynasty. Here's where it is, right here. It's the dynasty. We're the best team in the world right now. The best. There they are out there. I got to say, Red, you got the best coach in the world. They see a brilliant coaching job in this year. Thank you very much. I did the whole thing by myself, and I got some help from uh, from Larry Bird. However, uh, thanks to these guys, they helped me throughout the whole year, and uh, it's much appreciated. Uh, they see. Let me grab a word with a couple of the players. 
Cedric, 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 let me ask you about this, what this championship means to you and the Celtics. Oh, it's great, it's great, and I think we play with our hearts. I'd like to say hello to my mom, to all my frat brothers, all the makers out there in the world. I win number one, baby, yeah! Larry Bird, congratulations. You were the most valuable player, and I must add that they said you were gonna be the MVP if Boston even lost this game tonight. That's how great this series was. What does it mean to Larry? Well, it means a lot, but uh, there's a lot of players out there still capable of winning the MVP award, Bernard King and, and uh, Jabbar and some of the others, but uh, right now we just feel happy about winning. Larry, does this get you even with magic for what happened between Michigan State and Indiana State all those many years ago? That. We're professionals now, but uh, I won this one for Terre Haute. You won it for Terre Haute, I'll tell you that. Great series, and we're going to be back with hey, Dennis back. Johnson and some of the oh, other Celtics. Okay. How about Al Powell? Yeah. Yeah. From the Boston Celtics locker room yes. in just a moment. Larry, thank you. The celebration continues here in Boston. And with me now, I suppose, are the two most maligned guards in the entire NBA. Gerald Henderson on my right, Dennis Johnson on my left. Gerald, I've got to go back to game two. I think that your moment when you stole that ball and tied that game may have been the single biggest moment of the series. We had to have that game, and it, it proved to be a vital one for us because that carried us, it carried us right into this game. Dennis, when you were finally put on Magic Johnson, you did, you did a fabulous, fabulous job. Did you know you could do it? Well, I, I'll tell you like this, I came here in a year like this, and I was on a mission. Nobody thought I could do it, but I believed in myself, and that case and the team believed in me, and I just wanted to repay them back. And by God, Dennis Johnson got out on the court and worked his tail off, and we all won a championship. Oh, Everybody they sure did. They talk about our backcourt all year long, about we can't shoot from the outside, but we make things happen. And we made it happen tonight. I think they've set it all from down here. Let's go upstairs now to Dick Stockton. Thank you very much, Brandon. I've got some the two experts with me right now, Kevin Lockery on my mic and Tommy Heinsohn on my left. Kevin, how'd you look at this series? I think something happened in game four, Dick. When they put Dennis Johnson, the Celtics put Dennis Johnson on Magic Johnson, that turned the series around. Also in that game, it became a physical series. The Lakers were not as physical, particularly in game seven at the Celtics, and that turned it around. Glad to have you with us, My as usual. Today. Tommy? I think this was one of the all-time great series. It had everything. It had players playing great, and had players playing poorly, rebounding. Physical violence, coaches making charges in the press, players making charges in the press, and best of all, it had a class basketball game. And the Boston Celtics, who last summer had an ownership problem, Red Auerbach was quitting, Bill Fitch resigned, two players were unhappy, and Larry Bird and Kevin McHale, and it looked like this once proud franchise was in disarray. But they fixed it up in a hurry. What happened is that Bird and Kevin McHale were signed, they found new owners, and of course, Red Auerbach stayed on. He named Casey Jones as the head coach. They acquired Dennis Johnson and a team that was really shaky last hey, summer hey. now has won its 15th world championship. So this is Dick Stockton for Bert Musburger, Tom Heinsohn, Pat O'Brien, and Kevin Lockery saying so long from the Boston Garden, where the Boston Celtics have beaten the Los Angeles Lakers 111 to 102. And right now we'd like to